There are some jobs that are endlessly fascinating for audiences. Doctors, say, or crusading lawyers, journalists, scientists. People who can be seen as doing something useful, even noble. Well, that's not the case in the world of finance. Crooks and con men is the knee-jerk reaction among many audiences. Even people who are good at their job. Especially people good at their job. Welcome to the world of fair play. How did I get so lucky? Are you talking about me or your job? Okay, hey, sorry. We're getting married. We're getting married. Now, I should say that this position is not shared by Chloe Dumont, who's the writer and director of Fair Play, recently nominated for a gong at the Sundance Festival and now showing on Netflix. Chloe seems to be favourably disposed towards young lovers Emily and Luke, both up-and-comers at a top financial firm. I wish we could tell the whole world. We're going to have to tell them sooner than later. Morning. Morning. I think it's the right time to admit we're breaking policy. But the firm has strong views about workplace romance, which later proved to be well-founded, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Feelings often run high at work, where the stress of making and losing millions can lead to chaotic behaviour. Quinn, one of the top executives, loses the plot very publicly. Taking over for Quinn. What? I overheard it on a call. And the rumours are rife that his replacement is going to be hotshot Luke. He's delighted, and Emily is delighted for him, even if she thinks she's been kept out of contention by good old big business sexism. But then CEO Campbell invites her out for drinks. We're gonna go grab a drink. Do you want to join? You made half the big calls last quarter long. And suddenly all bets are off. Turns out it's not Luke up for promotion, it's Emily. So does this mean that the Wall Street glass ceiling has been well and truly shattered and the very able Emily has made it on her own merits? Or were favours exchanged? Luke can't help wondering. So, what did you want? He's promoting me. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Why? I'm so happy for you. Okay. Wonder how she got the fast pass. Reporting to her? Jesus, man. Now, it might have been a better, or at least a less predictable movie if they'd gone a bit further in that direction. If winning is everything on Wall Street, how far would you go? But that's not where Fair Play is heading. What's happened is the power dynamic between Emily and Luke has now changed. Look into this, let me know what you think. I'm still working on the three from before. OK, I'll we'll make this one the priority. Can Luke handle the fact that not only does he earn less than Emily, but he's actually working for her now? And it's soon clear that he's not as good at his job as she is, and if he's not careful, the bosses will edge him out of the company. Can I buy another? Now that you're making more money than me? <laughs> oh. What are you doing? You know it's just a game. You play it very well. So now Luke feels emasculated, but Emily's under pressure too to act just as blokey as the other executives. This means, predictably, regular late nights at the local strip club. As you know, it's mandatory in Wall Street movies, like mafia movies, to have a few scenes in a seedy strip club. How do you expect people to take you seriously when you dress like a cupcake? Excuse me? 25 million? What happened? You're pathetic. What'd you say to me? So Emily's career goes up, manifested by her coming home drunk after nights out with the boys, and Luke's career goes down, manifested by him staying home and getting drunk on his own. What could possibly go wrong? Or more wrong, maybe? You're letting him walk all over you. You want me to say it again? The only man I let walk all over me is you. Once again, showing an inability to read the room, Luke suggests Emily put pressure on the boss to give him a promotion. As you can imagine, that's not likely to end well. Are you going to pitch me to Campbell? I don't think it's a good idea. We both can't keep working here. I'm not quitting. This firm has become my religion. You have become my god. You give me this opportunity, I will give you everything I got. The casting of Fair Play is serviceable, if a bit soapy. 
Phoebe Dynevor made her name in TV series Bridgerton and the Brit version of Call My Agent, 10%. Alden Ehrenreich was good playing the young Han Solo a few years back, but the fact that most people can't pronounce his name is an indication he's not there yet. Are you out of your mind? You're going to end our relationship by setting off a bomb. We all do filthy things, but we don't trick it back into the office. Best thing in the film, as he usually is, is the versatile Eddie Marson as the poisonous Campbell. But the worst thing in it is an ending that's as brutal as it is excessive. I wish I could say it was making a point about gender imbalance and double standards, but it just came across as bullying to me. Why is it so hard to accept that I deserve that job? I never got the shot! Ah! This job... It's killing us.